everybody. I'm Stacy. And I'm my daughter, Mickey. And welcome to Kitty Nomics. <laughs> Yay, another fun Friday, Financial yeah. Literacy Friday. Why are you looking at me like that? You're <laughs> <stupid>. <laughs> Mickey's not as, as excited as I am today, but it's oh. Fridays with everybody on the call today. So uh, first, as usual, I'd like to start with some screen sh sharing here. So let me get that up. Let me get that up. Let me get that up. There we go. Is it going to play? All right. Oh. All right. All right, welcome to Kittynomics. Yeah. Why is it not working? <laughs> what am I? It's always something. I know, right? It's okay, hold on. I am going to have to get out of this. There we go. All right. So sorry about that. Welcome to Kittynomics, everybody. Uh, I'd like to welcome all of the new kitties that are on the webinar today. All the new ones that have just registered, welcome. We're gonna go through some heist housekeeping items. And of course, all of the returning kitties that have been on here week after week, we thank you for returning every single week uh, to learn some financial literacy skills. So just so you know, what is Kittynomics? Why are we here? So Kittynomics will help kids ages eight plus to develop a healthy relationship towards financial literacy, helping to start kids off on the right path to have a successful financial future. And that's what we want for you. So every week we're here, we talk about uh, some different topic relating to financial literacy to help grow your financial literacy skills so that as you get older into your adulthood, you will have these skills to draw back on to help you make educated and sound choices that are healthy for you towards a successful financial future. So some housekeeping items, we'd like to always thank the uh, uh, frontline workers, essential workers for keeping us healthy and safe throughout this time. And all of the moms and dads that have, have been in stage three that are going back to work, we wish, we wish you a safe journey back to work with your kids. And all the parents who keep us entertained. And all the parents <laughs> who keep your kitties entertained, we always like to thank us. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> um, and of course, so just, just to remind everybody, uh, as, as this is a webinar, we cannot see or hear any of the kids that are on the webinar. So kids, if you have any questions, please ask in the chat box down below. If you raise your hand, right, uh, using the raise the hands uh, feature in the webinar, Please then type your question in the chat box down below. Uh, Mustafa, I see that you raised your hand, but please ask your question in the <laughs> chat box uh, down below. And uh, then, we'll, we'll, then we'll be able to, uh, to answer your, your questions or anybody that does have questions um, on, the, on the webinar. Also, to remind you, that every single webinar is always recorded and we post the webinar by 3 p.m. on uh, every Friday. So you can go back and watch all of the Kittynomics webinars that we've had throughout our time. So if you missed any webinars or if you're on the webinar and you feel like you missed something and you didn't really understand it, you can always watch it back. We, the live webinar, webinars are here to help answer your questions, which is phenomenal. But if you have anything and we didn't answer it, try to watch back the webinar um, on our YouTube channel, on the Kitty Namas YouTube channel to see if that it did, your question was answered. Okay. So this week we are back with Miss Hadriana Leo. <laughs> Wait, how do you do this? It's like, that yeah? No. All right, whatever. No, if you want to do it, you do it like this. <laughs> Whoa. Yeah, you did it. I did it? Yeah, <laughs> I did it. <laughs> you did it. I might hurt myself if I try. <laughs> <laughs> oh. 
Yeah. Well, we have the money back there, <laughs> Miss Adriana. We are so excited to have her back because last week was fun filled. We talked about credit cards for kids last week. So this this week is about online money smarts because this is a big topic. Yeah. Um, a lot of you kitties don't understand um, that people are trying to lure you uh, into giving your financial information or, or get you to buy things on, on websites that could be dangerous for you. So we wanted to touch on this topic because I know Mickey's always asking me for these random items on these random sites. And I'm like, I'm not putting my credit card on that. Nope. And you're not getting it. <laughs> right? So we need to talk about this thing, this, this topic. So Miss Hadriana is going, she is the money navigator, trademarked by the way, as a personal finance, personal finance coach and consultant. She helps professionals and small business owners to rapidly reduce debt and manage cash flow so that they can avert financial crisis often without having to earn a penny more and with no product sales and no commission. So Ms. Adriana, I'd like to welcome Woo! you back to Kitty Nomad. We are super excited to have you back. Let me try to escape this. There we go. And and I'm gonna stop sharing my screen. Yeah. There we go. There we go. There's Ms. Adriana. Hi. Whoa. Hi, everybody. Oh my goodness. So I'm back. <laughs> oh my goodness. It's so, I'm so happy to be back because last time I was here, there's so many things that were just running through my head to share with you. And I kept having to say to myself, you don't have enough time. You don't have enough time. Not enough time. And still we went long, didn't we, Miss Stacy? <laughs> we did. So we're going to try to stay on time today, but I still want to be able to answer all your questions. So how about we jump right in, okay? And remember, if you're raising your hand, we can't get you to do anything. So put your questions in, in the chat. Make sure you do that. So here we go. First things first. Make sure you watch your screen because I need you to guess something for me. Ladies and gentlemen, let's see. You know what? First, let's recap. Last week, we talked about how credit cards work, right? So let's just recap. Every time you swipe a card, if it's a credit card or a debit card, money comes from your account or your credit card account and it goes from your credit card account or your bank account, it goes to the shop or the place where you're making your purchase. So for example, if you're getting those Fortnite skins, we're back to that. <laughs> if you're getting those Fortnite skins or you're downloading packs for your games, you ask your mom or dad or your guardian to use their credit card or debit card. The moment they put the information in, or they swipe the card at the game store or wherever, money goes from the, the places you have money and it goes to the store. So that's how the money's moving around. You don't see it with your eyes, but it's happening like that, right? And money is moving even if we don't see it. But I want you to do something for me. Keep your eyes on the screen. Yeah, mommy. All right, all right, all right, all right. I need you to tell me. I'm gonna do this. You have to look, you have to watch really hard. I need you to guess how much money I've got in my hand. Ah, 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 did you see that? <laughs> okay, 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 okay. I'm gonna do it again. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do it again. I want you to guess how much money I've got in my hand. Ready? Oh. So again. Tom says two hundred and fifty bucks. One nope. I'll, I'll do says five hundred. Uh, nope. Mickey says one thousand. Nope. There we go. Okay. Uh, Gabriel's a thousand. Okay, last time. Last time. I'm for Maya. Three thousand. I like I'm you. I love you guys. Da 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 da
What do you think? <laughs> oh, that said 755. Thomas says 550. You guys need to watch. You guys need to watch the price is right. 790. All right. From Catherine. 800. Okay. 900. So I'm gonna I'm gonna put you out of your misery. I'll tell you what you just saw. You saw what looks like. Nine hundred and thirty dollars. Thirty. I so just saved. <laughs> <laughs> so close, right? So close. So close. But guess what? Guess what? There is only actually ten dollars in my hand because the rest of the money is fake. <gasps> oh, boom. <laughs> like boom. There's only a real $10 bill in all of this nine, <laughs> $930. And yes, Gabriel, you are absolutely correct. You have just been scammed. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. Isn't that uh, something? Impressive, Adriana. <laughs> that was really smart. And that's what, that's what happens when people try to get our information. They trick us. They make us think they're giving us something that's not actually real. So from where you're sitting, this is money that I use when I teach my high school and elementary courses. It, I use this. I have, I printed about $100,000 worth of pretend money. Go ahead, Miss Stacy. Sorry. So Catherine, yes, we are located in Canada and I know you're located in the U.S. So yes, our money's a little bit different. Our money's colorful. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and it's never that's right and it's waterproof so it's our waterproof is now different, but it still works in the yes. u.s money is money right a, a dollar is a dollar in any person's country absolutely so our money our money is a little colorful and it is plastic so it doesn't rip yes um, it, it used to be paper like this uh it used to be a special paper similar to what you use in the u.s but it has always for the well for the longest time it's always been colorful it looks like monopoly money in canada yeah. and in lots of other parts of the world the the money in europe is colorful the money in england is colorful the money in the caribbean yeah is colorful mm -hmm. it's just when i go to new york i can't figure out if i'm giving a five or a 20 because they're all the same color. <laughs> but it's part, it's, it's part of what makes our money experiences so special and individual because we're coming from different places and we have perhaps one day i'll bring if i get to do this again i used to be the treasurer for a church and sometimes we would get foreign money from different places. And I collected some of the foreign money that didn't really have value to convert. So I have a lot of different coins and paper money from lots of different countries. And it's all really beautiful. It's a wonderful world we live in. But hey, $10. That's all that was real in this whole pack of what I had in my hand. And the thing about what just happened here is that it happens to a lot of people. Now, I want you to, I want, I'm gonna scroll up on my, in my comments because in the chat, Thomas asked, isn't it obvious not to buy on random sites? Isn't it? <laughs> isn't <laughs> is it? it? Do you know if it's random or not? Exactly. <laughs> and it gets to be really tricky because when the people who are trying to trick you are this good, and this isn't even really good, they're much better. When they can really create things that look so close to the real thing, it's really, really hard to spot the fake stuff. So I want to give you some examples today of some of the fake stuff that I've gotten. I literally, everything I'm gonna show you is literally stuff I got. So you're seeing my live emails and so on. Some things I want you to understand. First of all, 
If you have a bank account, even if it is your money, the first thing I want you to understand is do not buy anything before you speak to your parents. Do not use your card anywhere if you don't speak to your parent or your guardian. I know it's your money, it was your birthday and grandma said, but before you use it, make sure you talk to your parent or your guardian to ensure that what you're about to do is, is safe. It's gotta be kosher, people. It's gotta be kosher. Um, that's one. And second, you rem I think we talked about that before. You have to think about what you wanna buy before you buy it and make sure it's what you actually want. So now that we have that out of the way, let's talk about some of the scams that are going on. Now, when emails or text messages or WhatsApp messages are sent out specifically, deliberately, like especially to try to trick you, it's called phishing. Now, who can spell Fishing. <laughs> F I S H I I N G. Correct <laughs> and still not correct. No, Olivia says the same thing. Ol mm -hmm. Oliver, uh, Olivia, Koi, Maya says the same thing in fishing. F I S H I N G. And you guys are right. Jay and Jay were... Brothers says the same thing. Cody. Oh, whoa! Yeah. We have some different spelling. Yes. Ryan says P H I S H I N G. Yes. And that's the thing. If you're talking about getting a worm on the hook and tossing it into the lake, then you spell fishing F I S H I N G. So you are correct. When we're talking about trickery when we're talking about swiper trying to swipe your information that we spell p h i s h i n g fishing fishing perfect so we're gonna talk about fishing and we're gonna talk about how to spot some fishy fishy emails because most of the time, that's kind of where it starts. That's kind of where you get people just sending out information and trying to see if they're going to hook you with a fishy email. So I'm going to share my screen. I'm going to show you some examples of fishy emails. I'm going to start with, oh, this is a good one. And I want you to, we'll talk about what you're about to see. And we'll talk about how you can spot that. So let us begin. Huh. Okay, so what you're looking at right now is an email that came to my email last, oh, this morning. Ah, there you go. They never stop. They never sleep. Okay, can, I'm hoping everybody can see this. And tell me what you notice. Is there anything here that strikes you as being fishy? Do you want me to make it bigger? Mm -hmm. Let's see if I can make it a little bit bigger for you. How's that? Yeah. Okay. Whoa, that is huge. Oh my goodness. Stop, stop, stop. <laughs> <laughs> my mouse got a little too much encouragement. Yeah. Okay. So this came to my email from this person and it came this morning and this is what it says. All right, I'm going to I'm going to get my my chat going here so I can see you. Yeah. So I can see no, your comments. Uh, uh, Mustafa says no one will just make you a millionaire. Maya mm -hmm. says the name is Taylor Jason. Mm -hmm. Someone went fishing. Uh, Egypt says someone f went fishing to see if you would. Sorry, I got to move this over. Actually, sign up. Mm -hmm. um, uh, become a millionaire today okay. from Koi. Right. Um, yeah, so they're trying to see. Account details seems yes. fishy. Yes. Mm -hmm. Very sign good. Up. Very, very good. I love that you all are actually focusing in 
on the details of what you're looking at. Because trust me when I tell you, there are grown-ups who would click on that. And it's not because they're not smart. It might just be because they're curious and they kind of just want to see where it would go. First things first, never click. Don't click. If you don't, can I move to the left? Hang on. I'm just going to make it a little smaller and see if that'll give you what you want to see. Um, so don't click. If you're just curious about it, um, don't click it because just by clicking it sometimes, they are able to put all kinds of really smart and quiet bugs in your computer that'll be able to capture when you're typing your passwords or which sites you're going to and all kinds of other things like that. So here's what, how I knew viruses. That's right, Olivia. They were able to install viruses on your machines, even on your cell phones, just by clicking, even if you never put any information in. So when I saw that, first thing I thought to myself was, I don't know anybody named Jason Taylor. I actually don't know anybody named Jason Taylor. So who is this Jason Taylor? That's one thing. Then I looked at this person's email address, sorry. And the email address is like, what is that? I don't know, mailing at sans-mail.nl. Right up here. I don't know what that is, right? That makes no sense to me. That's two strikes already. Josh, I know you want to be a millionaire, but you will not be clicking that. Good for you. <laughs> very, very good. And some of you have said this. You cannot become a millionaire overnight. Even if you win the lottery, you're still going to have to wait a few days before you get that. And you're certainly not going to get it by clicking something, right? So second thing we have to take notice of, these people don't know my name. Hmm. They don't know my name. And my email address is here. This is my actual email address. But none of this is part of my name. So they said it contains information for the following user. And you see what they did? They just took the beginning part of my email address and they tried to make it into my name. They're sneaky, these little guys, they're sneaky. So second thing, they don't know my name. And if you are getting information from an actual, like a place where you do real life business, like legit real life business, they would know your name. And I'm gonna show you later some ex uh, one example of a real, proper um, uh, email that came in, in to me. Second. Josh says, if you click this, you will be broke. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Josh, in a hurry, like legit broke. <laughs> and the, all of this profit stuff that doesn't make sense. Bitcoin is not fake. Bitcoin is not a scam, but they're putting things in there that will make you curious. Things that will say, oh, wow, let me see what this is about. And then you click this video and it's going somewhere you don't want it to go. So something else I want you to be able to do is, let me make sure I've got this working. I want you to be able to watch when you hover, if you just take your mouse, I think people still use mice for their computer. Or if you have a laptop, and you're just moving the cursor around. If you just put your cursor on this part here, then it'll actually tell you where you would end up going if you actually clicked on it. And that video, you don't want to be anywhere near it. Okay, so we are not clicking. So that's one example. Let me take this one down. Let's take a look at Let's see, let's take a look at another example on my screen. Yeah, uh, Maya wants to know, can you just delete it? Can you delete it from Maya? Yes, 
Maya, that's the best thing you can do. And some email providers actually let you report them. So if you get an email that looks fishy with a PH, if it looks fishy to you, you have the opportunity, you can click on a specific link in your email. Uh, like if you have Gmail, you can tell Gmail, this is junk. And you can tell that you can report that this is a phishing email. That helps to kind of stop them. But I'll tell you honestly, guys, there are so many of these tricksters out there that when you put one away, there's always another few to replace them. Okay, Mickey's got a question. So do they get um, like money for like putting up this website? So they don't get money for just putting up the website. They get money because of the information they get once we go and use the website. So the website by itself does not make them money. But for example, here's, here's a for example for you. If I clicked on that video, let's say, pretend, because I ain't going to do it, but <laughs> if we pretend and say, okay, I clicked on the video and this thing came up and now, um, oh, this one's Netflix, hang on. And now I'm at a website, right? Chances are 99% of the time, they're going to ask you to put in some information. So once you get to the website, that's where they're gonna get you because they're gonna tell you, oh, great, great that you want to be a billionaire. Here's what you have to do. You only have to send us $20 and we're gonna make you a Bitcoin billionaire. Oh my goodness but that's what happens. So once the website by itself does not make money, but once we start putting information into those places only because mm, I'm curious, that's when they catch us. And I don't want you to think that the people who do that are stupid or dumb or anything like that. That's not what it is. A lot of people get into this just because they want to kind of, I wonder what's going to happen if I do that. And a lot of young people like you get into this kind of trouble because they go in and say, mommy says I'm not supposed to do that. I'm going to do it anyway. Oh my goodness. Because <laughs> you know, sometimes I understand and I get it because I was a kid too. I'm still a kid to be honest. I just look like I'm not, but I'm still a kid. So a lot of times, you know, you get upset with mom or dad and sometimes you think that mommy or daddy or your guardian is just, they don't want you to have fun. Mm -hmm. but that's not what it is. It's really designed to protect you. So when mom or dad says not to do this, it's for a really legitimate reason and you have to be very careful. Okay, let me see if I can get you another example. So but one I, second, Tadriana, sorry. Yes. Um, we had some really good questions and comments on the chat. So one I really want to address from Egypt. She says, I delete it and unsubscribe from the mailing list. Should you unsubscribe or should you just delete it? And, and don't, don't, don't click anything nothing in that email. If you are suspicious that if, if you think that it is not an email that is legit, like it's not good. If you have any reason to think it is fishy, don't click, don't sniff, don't even look too hard. Just delete it. <laughs> so another so a few other other kids had mentioned um i block it just get an ad blocker from thomas so you can block it you right? could you could and, and uh you can report it as miss hadriana had had said and yes. then so and then one of the other uh so thomas also said um you know what they try to do is when when you click on it it will bring you to inappropriate sites very inappropriate. 
that's another reason not to be clicking on things that are that you don't know. Sorry. Yeah. For sure. Was that a question you had, Mickey? Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Okay, go for it. So basically, there's a subword that's called the dark, dark, dark webs, dark web, the dark web. The dark web. Yeah. Yes. There so, is. But basically, like that, like gives out like people, like random people, from like different places that you don't know. And yeah. If you come it, to it, your house, you like deliver them, and they're overpriced. And after when they come, they start. You start to like. They they're like. Creatures, random creatures. Not random. Creatures. <laughs> but, but the dark web does exist, so we yes. don't want to go there, right? We don't want anything to do with the dark web. I want to show you another example because I think this is one that sometimes your parents fall into. Uh, how many of you guys have Netflix at home? How many of you have Netflix? I've got Netflix and I've got this and that and the other, Amazon Prime. And these days there's Disney Plus and there's, you know, yeah, most of you, you guys, we all enjoy Netflix. Well, this email came to my inbox on August 7th. That was like last Friday. And it came saying that Netflix was emailing me. So what would you think if you have a Netflix account and Netflix is sending you an email? You would think, I better see what Netflix is saying, right? Right, okay, I already see that some of you are spotting some of the little danger details, right? Uh, Egypt, you have a very good eye. In fact, all of you have really, really good eyes and I have to say, I am very impressed. I'm saying that now you guys are on the ball, right? Hold up, there is a space between net and flix. You got it. There is a tiny little space between the word N-E-T-F and the space F-L-I-X. Do you see that? They are tricky, these scammers, right? They are really tricky. But not only is there a space in the word Netflix, look at the email that it's coming from. It says, whatever these words are, <laughs> at A-K-U-C, oh my goodness. Last time I checked, Netflix sends me emails from something at netflix.com right? Yes. And this is definitely not coming from netflix.com. So you have to be really tricky. So that's the first big sign. Second, how many people did this email go to? Can you see? Yes. All the people here, down here too. Look, look, look. Can you see how many people? Look. One, two, oh. three, me, that's four, plus 46 other people? Yes. What? Yeah, all the kids, Olivia said 46, Joel, 46. Um, it went to 46, one, two, three, four. It went to 50 people. So here's another thing you have to pay attention to. If you're getting emails that are asking you for money information, it will only come to you. A legit, right, straight up company is never going to send the same email to a whole list of people and for you to be able to see that, right? That's a no-no. Okay, so that's another thing. And yeah, you're right, lots of people, that's a big fake. Um, and then guess what else? They've never called me by my name. Netflix knows my name. Nowhere in there is Miss Hadriana. Let me just tell you that your credit card is messed up and things are not working. No, it simply says they cannot authorize the payment they'll be unable to process blah, blah, blah. And here it is again. Try again payment. 
what do you mean try again payment? Is that English? Like if our English teacher was sitting here, would she say that try again payment is a full sentence? No, right? Is that a proper sentence? No. Who is teaching these people how to write? So that's another thing you can look for with fishing. Usually somewhere in the mix, there's bad English. <laughs> <laughs> I used to be an English teacher, so I spot it right away. There's bad spelling. There's poor grammar. Look at that. Look at this sentence. To resolve the issue, comma, space, capital P after a comma? Someone needs to go back to English class, right? <laughs> Right? Totally. And you need to look for stuff like that, bad grammar, poor spelling. And again, if you see something like this in your inbox, are you clicking? No. No. Right? No. Not at all. You are not clicking. Even if it looks like it comes from a place where you actually do business, you are not clicking. So we talked about a lot of different things so far. Let me see if I can get you, oops. Let me see if I can get you one more quick example before I wrap it up and oh then take any more questions. Oh, this is always a good one. This is a... So I oh. see in the chat box, Ms. Hadriana, okay. one of the kids had mentioned that, you know what, when they're playing their games like Roblox or Minecraft, mm -hmm. they get all of these like, like emails or ads saying, oh, you know, give us a hundred dollars and we'll give you $50,000. Yes. Exactly. Would that be phishing? Let, right? me, let me show you an example of exactly that because okay. I got one. Job. I got one. Yeah, it would tell you if you bought it. It would give an email that this person has bought this and this person bought this. Sometimes, sometimes it does, but sometimes it's after the fact. So uh, this is an email that came in my inbox in July. Look at what it says. You have a donation of 850,000 US dollars from Philip Chippewa. <laughs> So you which? Apparently, and I just don't know it. <laughs> <laughs> right? But this came in my inbox. So you guys are smart, right? You know that I think Mustafa just said that. Nobody just gives away money. Mm -mm. Nobody. Right? And certainly not $850,000. Hello. Right? So when you see those pop-ups coming in on your screen while you're playing Roblox or cool math games or whatever it is, don't click. If you want money, go ask grandma or <laughs> tell grandma you need an, an advance on the birthday thing because, you know, COVID is really messing with your head. You need an extra $5 so you can go to the convenience store and buy candy and forget about these masks you have to stick on your face ask grandma <laughs> or ask your special aunties or or do it that way going online it's a scary scary thing when you don't know what you're doing and th that's the other thing too you might be thinking i don't have money in my account right so they're not i mean if all you have maybe is $20, that's all that's left in your account after your big splurge on Roblox, you're thinking, well, there's only $20, so there's nothing else they can do to me. Guess what? As long as these viruses are on the machine, they don't get, they don't only get access to your stuff, they can get access to your mom's stuff, they can get access to a lot of other people's stuff and it all starts with one click on a fishy email okay so i want to make sure we understand this and now i'm going to show you a one example of a legit email 
And I'm picking this one deliberately because I really want to fly somewhere. <laughs> like right now, I feel like if I could just fly anywhere, I'd be happy. <laughs> just put me on a plane. Even if you just go from here to Scarborough, I'd be happy. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm going to show you this one. And this is from WestJet, right? WestJet is having a sale. <gasps> And I got this one this morning at 10 o'clock. So I want you to look at what is different between the emails examples I showed you before and this one, right? First things first, it is coming from westjet.com, right? If we look up here, it's coming from WestJet and it's coming from westjet.com. Now I know you see, I think you see the EM dot WestJet. The EM is specific to the email that is being sent. They have marketing campaigns. You guys are going to talk about that as you talk more about entrepreneurship, but it is legitimate coming from WestJet.com. And it is, how many people got this email? Just you, I think. How many people? Oh, Look at that. Egypt says it says your name on it. Yes. Mustafa says it's at, at email.wasjet.com. Yes. So, and, and Gabriel says one person. Maya says you, one person. Good job, me. everybody. I, I very, very good. Question? Yes, love. So, if, what if Donald Trump uses these web, the website? Is what if he uses the website? To yeah. do what? To do what? To like, like those are what websites that like take away your money and stuff. Oh, oh my goodness. If he gets scammed, I guess. <laughs> he would get scammed just like the rest of us. Nobody yeah. is immune to it. Did you know, do you guys know who Bill Gates is? Bill yes. Gates is like one of the richest people in the whole world. And about two weeks ago, he got scammed. He got, he got hacked. So somebody hacked his Twitter account and sent all of these tweets that he thought that people thought it was him sending it out. And you have to remember, Mr. Gates is a very giving person. He helps a lot of people. So he put the, the scammer, the hacker scammer person, sent this tweet out saying that Mr. Gates is willing to donate money to people. They just have to click on this link. And some people got scammed because a hacker kind of took over. So everybody can, it can happen to everybody. It might be different, but it can happen to a lot of people. Um, but yeah, this is an example of a legitimate email that comes from somebody that I actually work with, WestJet. It says my name, Hadriana Leo. And it's telling me about things that I know already exist. So I can always double check. Now, I want to say if, for example, you're, you're kind of not sure, don't click a link in the email, call. So if I thought that WestJet, that doesn't sound like WestJet. And this happened to my friend a few weeks ago too. I got an email from her and I thought to myself, that does not sound like Trish. So instead of replying to the email, I called my friend and I said, did you send this email? And she said, oh my goodness, my email was hacked. And she had to send and fix everything. So if any time you are not sure about, um, about where an email is coming from, you can always call. Don't click, don't click, call, and then you can get confirmation. So I wanna know if you guys have questions. I wanna do a quick recap. I have my papers here. I hope everything's kosher. I hope I covered everything. Do you guys have any questions? Because I want Miss Stacy to say, hey, Adriana did not go too long. <laughs> <laughs> I want to star today. <laughs> okay, um, I think I have a question. Okay. okay so, so how much, like, when you get scammed, like, what did it take away from you? 
Aha, that is a great question. Okay, so when you get scammed, people could take, literally take your money. So the money that you have in your bank accounts, but something that could actually be worse is people can take your identity. Now you're thinking to yourself, how does a person do that? What does that mean? So here's the thing. Remember we talked to you last time about credit and we spoke just a little bit about credit reports where all of the information about how you're handling your money goes? Well, if someone knows enough information about you, they can pretend to be you. <gasps> and what happens when that happens? Someone can pretend to be Mickey and say, I want a new Roblox account and connect that Roblox account to your mommy's bank account. <gasps> oh my goodness. Somebody can pretend to be Catherine and set up their own, um, like a separate bank account altogether. That person might live in a country far, far away, but because they were able to get Catherine's information, they were able to pretend to be her and create stuff that looks like it belongs to Catherine, but actually it goes to this place far, far away. And what kind of information could they steal that would let them pretend to be you? Well, they can take your name. So if your name, if my name is Hadriana Leo, and there aren't many people in the world with an H in front, so it's pretty unique. <laughs> so they would say, I am Hadriana Leo. And what else do they need? Your birth date. A lot of times, most people have their birthdays, like on social media, like Snapchat sends you a special thing when it's your birthday. And, you know, Facebook sends you balloons when it's your birthday. I don't know what TikTok does. I, I still can't wrap my head around TikTok, but I'm just saying. <laughs> but if they use your name, your date of birth, like when's your birthday, and they, like, they can find out where you live. Oh my gosh, that's scary. They find out where you live. Um, Sometimes they are able to find out where you work, if you have a job, or even where you go to school. That's scary stuff. And then they get to pretend to be you. Niobe, you are right. Sometimes they go so far as pretending to be a citizen of the country where you live. So those scammers can take your money, but even more dangerously, they can take your identity and that's scary so i didn't i didn't want to scare you guys but it's unfortunately it's something that is real and is happening so you have to be super duper careful can i tell you one other scary thing i heard about this week it was a young a young young kid does not yet have a driver's license but that child got into a car, took their brother's car, their older brother's car, and drove miles and miles and miles to meet a stranger that they connected with on Snapchat. So that stranger was able to scam this kid and get them to steal a car and come and meet them. That's a whole other conversation but I want you to know, don't click. Do not touch it. And if you're going to give out any information about your money to anybody on any website, make sure you talk to your mom, your dad, or your guardian to be sure that you are safe, everybody's safe, and there's only one Hadriana in the world. Because we only want one Mickey, and we want one Egypt, and one Catherine, and only one Miss Stacy. So nobody gets to pretend to be us, and hurt us, or those with the people that we love. 
So Miss Adriana, really quick question to wrap it up because that was amazing. I think the kids have now fully grasped, I hope, um, what uh, you need to do or what you shouldn't do. But what do you need to do if you were to get hacked? Yes. What should a child do? Well, first things first, every one of you, if you have any online accounts, you need to check it regularly because a lot of times you're hacked or you're scammed and you don't even realize it. So you have to be able to check. So it, prob it means you either go to the bank with mom and get a um, statement of what's happening with your account, or you can go online through your legitimate bank connections. If you do get hacked, well, let me ask you, what should you do if you figure, oh my goodness, something's not right with my account. Something's going on and I don't know what it is. What should you do? What do you think? So uh, Egypt says, tell your parents immediately. Josh says, tell your mom. Gabriel says, call your parents so they can call the bank and make sure the money is secure. Tell right? your grandma. Tell your grandma. <laughs> tell your parents. Yes. Um, shut down the account. You could, if you <laughs> need to. Uh, she's account. saying, shut down the account. That's a smart one. Or lock their account. Or lock it. Or lock it. So I, I'm going to tell you guys this. I can't find my Costco card. So I used it last Friday and I've been looking everywhere for this card. Like this is real life. And when yesterday I said, uh, I said, girls, I said to my daughters, girls, I still don't know where this card is. My older daughter says, mom, you have to lock the account and report to the company that the card has been lost or stolen. So that'll lock the account. So I'm doing that today. Like this is real life because what happens is if someone finds it, let's just say it was not stolen. Let's just say I just misplaced it, literally just lost it. But if someone finds the card, they can start spending my money and I don't know how to stop it. So I need to report it. And if you are still with mom or dad, yes, tell your parents and make sure, bug them until they do it. Make sure they call the bank and they tell the bank, Mickey has lost her card or Josh clicked something sometime and there's this charge on his account that we don't know where it came from. Like, you know how you guys can bug your parents. Y'all know how y'all can bug your parents. So stay on them like white on rice until they call and report it. So that's what you do if you realize you've been scammed and uh, make sure you have good protection on your computers. Again, that's a whole other conversation, but you need antivirus on your computers. You need good, healthy online habits in what you're doing and where you're clicking. And if anything happens, call the bank, resolve it. And most of the time, if you've been doing, you've been very responsible with how you use your money, most of the time the bank or the credit card company would be able to give you the money back. Most of the time, most of the time. So just make sure you do your best by staying vigilant, keeping observant, you know, not clicking, talking to mom and dad and all of that good stuff. So you stay safe online. All right, guys. All right. Perfect. Yes. Awesome. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> We'd like to thank once again, Miss Hadriana Leo got us educated, right? Totally. Right, fine. Girls, right? Yeah. We are now more educated on what we should and shouldn't be doing while we're online mm -hmm. because yes, we're always online using our devices, but there are people out there that are trying to trick us. Yeah. They're tricksters. They're trying to keep yeah. our money from us. Yeah. Or they do are. other things, right? So yep. we don't want that to happen. We want to make sure that you guys are Boys and girls are always safe, safe and healthy, right? That's what yep. we want. So perfect. Um, I'm going to wrap up. Thank you again, Miss Hadriana. I'm my going pleasure. To I'm, I'm going to put my ten dollars away. <laughs> <laughs>
somebody lied about that. Somebody had asked, hey, where do you even get fake money from? <laughs> oh, yeah, I had it done up. In fact, you have to, I, I'll show you something. It's fake. It's very obviously fake if you're close up. Because I've put stuff on it that makes it very obvious. The printer will not print it unless it is very obviously fake. Uh, it's illegal to try to print fake money. Yes. Right. Yeah. yeah. So good. So, so yeah, let's not, let's, that's, that's not what we want to do. <laughs> no, not at all. And you will not win. Don't bother trying it. No, that's not what we want to do. All righty. So question, what would happen if kids became more financially literate? And our answer is real change that impacts the world. Real change that impacts the world. So the more financially literate that you become, the better choices and decisions that you will make that will positively affect your outcomes in life to have a very successful financial future, but just a very successful future in general. And I don't know, maybe you're the next person to come up with the, the, the cure that will cure AIDS or cancer or whatever it is. But we don't want your finances to be a roadblock in stopping you for achieving the best you that you can be, right? And that's what we want. So upcoming schedule, upcoming schedule yeah, as yeah, usual. Yeah, yeah. Next week is the amazing Horace Dockery. We are going to be talking about real estate Ooh. investing for kids. So Love you're it. like, so now this is a really adult topic that I wanted to bring to you kitties because as you get into university and college, this is something that you may want to consider. So we're going to talk about how you can own your own home and investing in real estate, maybe renting it out um, to make money with your money. So we're going to be talking about that next week. And I'm really, really, really looking forward to this conversation with Horace next week. It's going to be awesome. Then right after that, the following week is going to be with Jeff Martin. Jeff Martin is like phenomenal, so phenomenal. He's going to talk about public speaking for kids. Mm. Now, that's a really good topic. Nikki's probably going to love this topic because it's going to help you, uh, you, you boys and girls when you're presenting in front of your class or if you want to. We talked about entrepreneurship a few weeks ago um, in one of our past webinars. So if you haven't seen it, please check out our YouTube channel and look up entrepreneurship. Um, but if you're going to start writing your business plans, which I know some of you guys are doing, if you're going to start writing your business plans, well, you soon you got to pitch your idea, right? You got to pitch it. Whether or not you're going to need seed money from your parents to help start your business. No, no, not from your parents, from your grandma. From your grandma. <laughs> Miss Adriana, do you see what you started? The poor nanas are going to be like, oh, no, no, she all of these started. requests. <laughs> Forgive all me. All these requests, all the, grand, all the grandkids are going to be calling them now. <laughs> um, but, okay, so if you're pitching to your nanas or your grandmas or your grandpas or your, um, or your pop pops, whatever it is, uh, you know, you are going to need public speaking skills. So how to properly articulate when you are presenting, standing I'm up straight. Need this. Yes. yes. Right? She needs this one. So this is gonna be awesome. Then after that, we have the amazing Miss Keisha Johnson. She's yeah. going to be phenomenal, right? I love all of our experts that are on Awesome. Here. Like all of our experts, I must say, have been absolutely amazing. So Keisha is going to be amazing. She's going to present on Friday, September 4th. We're going to do credit for kids review, okay? Because credit, as you get older, you're going to see is a very big part of your financial health. So we're mm -hmm. always going to be touching on the importance of credit. And I want you to fully understand credit on the platform. All right. So that's what we have coming up in the next couple of weeks. And then it's going to be back to school. I did let you guys know next week, I will be sending out a survey because Kittynomics, the time will have to change when school starts. So we're going to continue on with Kittynomics. However, it won't be at 11 a.m. because whether you're doing online learning or you're going to be in class learning, you're still going to be learning at that time. So we're going to move Kittynomics to a time after school, most likely five o'clock. However, I will send out a survey to kind of gauge what's, what's the uh, best time for kids, but most likely five, we'll see. 
Um, so yes, yeah, so Kittynomics will still continue every Friday, but just not at 11 because you'll be learning elsewhere. But we want you to come back and learn with us because financial literacy is so vastly important and a life skill that you will need as you get older, okay? And so uh, last part is, um, we always want to talk to you. So we want to create tiny financial literacy ambassadors around the globe. So if you have anything that you'd like to share with us, any questions that you may have, please, 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 you know, message me. You can send me an email at kittynomics101 at gmail.com. You can contact us on, we have what? What do we have? We have Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, and TikTok. So right after the video is posted, I'm going to post a TikTok. She says she's going to post a TikTok. I we'll see. She's been you. saying this. I promise you. Look, she's been you saying this. All right. All right. We'll see. <laughs> Anyways. Um, so yeah, we have YouTube. So please remember that every single webinar is posted on our YouTube channel at by three o'clock every Friday. So if you miss something, we are always recording these webinars so that you can go back and watch them and watch all of our past webinars that we've had. So you got, so all you kids can catch and, up, right? And if you guys are, and, and if you guys um, think we're talking way too fast, you can always slow down the video. Yes, you can always slow it down. Slow it down. Anyways, thank you once again, Miss Hadriana. Thank Have you. a wonderful week, all the kids and all the parents that joined us today. today. Have woo, a good week. We'll see you next week. We can't forget the grandmas. And the grandmas. <laughs> and the grandmas. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Bye.